perfect. Hi. Uh, so yes, I'm Lizzie. Um, for those of you that don't necessarily know me, um, I am the Learning Technology Officer for the Royal Zoological Society of Scotland, which is the wildlife charity which runs Edinburgh Zoo, where I'm based most of the time, and the Highland Wildlife Park up in Aviemore. Uh, my pronouns are she, her, and just by way of a visual description, um, I'm female with brown hair and I am against a background with some penguins and bubbles. Um, and I'd like to start this by apologising for the lack of frogs. The only frog photos I could find in our entire database are blue poison arrow frogs. Um, I didn't think that would really go, but I'm wearing my favourite green dress, so I think that counts. Um, and I am not an expert in this at all, despite working for a conservation charity. This is an area which is quite new to me as well. Um, it's just something I brought up in the last smug that I said um, that I've been interested in researching and wondered whether anyone else had. And it looked like a thing that lots of people were interested in, but nobody knew anything about. So I've gone away and done some research and this is literally just a presentation of my research. I'm not an expert. If I've got things wrong here, I apologize. And basically um let's learn together <laughs> um so my interest in this started when I was at a different conference and somebody said that their website was more sustainable because it had a black background and I was like why that's not a thing I've ever thought of why is black more sustainable so I fell down an internet rabbit hole and I'm gonna bring you with me now <laughs> um so I'm gonna start by a quick like what is sustainability um and there's a really nice definition i think the nicest definition i've ever found for sustainability is from the bruntland report um which says that it is meeting the needs of the present without compromising the ability of future generations to meet their needs um and there are three kind of key pillars there are lots of different elements to sustainability um but there's kind of three key pillars um which is environmental um, which is obviously going green, which is what I'm going to talk about today. Um, there's economic, which is um, the kind of decision making kind of side of it and social and um, how people behave. Um, so I'm going to focus on reducing carbon emissions, making um, it more environmentally friendly. But I think it's important to remember that sustainability is bigger than that. And there are other factors that you need to take into account if you're saying you're going sustainable. It's a much bigger term. So how does this all apply to Moodle? Um, I can see there's a couple of chat things coming in, so I'm just going to pop that up too. <laughs> so how does this apply to Moodle, sustainability, um, environmentally friendly things? Um, and basically, creating and running um, web infrastructures uses a lot of natural resources. Um, we always say that, you know, things are in the cloud, we're going to store this in the cloud, but it's not just like a floaty thing in the sky. It's a physical data center that uses up a lot of land, um, lots and lots of water to keep these data centers cool. They're using electricity 24 seven while they're running. Most of these places also have backup generators, um, which run on non-renewable fuels like diesel. Then once you've got trying to get your data out of a data center, um, you need all kinds of other infrastructure and um, you need sort of global and national repeaters all around the world, um, which need these electricity. They also need um, different resources in the forms of all the, all the metals and things which go into the cabling for it. And then, of course, the devices at home that you're viewing Moodle or the Internet on. Um, so not just your computer or your phone, but anything Internet enabled um, and your Wi-Fi router as well. Um, phones are particularly bad because they use a lot of rare, raw, natural minerals and resources. Um, and we seem to be using, like replacing them every three years as well. Um, people tend to keep their desktop computers a lot longer and their phones a lot shorter. Um, so they can be particularly damaging to um, the environment. So the world's data centers, um, this is a fact which I uh, found um, a bit shocking, was that the world's data centers use more electricity than the whole of the UK. Um, if I think I put this on my sort of talk descriptor, but if the internet were a country, it would be the seventh um, most polluting in the world, kind of uh, roughly equal to Germany. Um, 
So the uh, Journal for Cleaner Production estimates that communication technologies will use 14% of global electricity by 2040. Um, so that is up from just 4% in 2020. And I can see someone, um, oh no, planets, sorry, I thought I said planes. Um, people always talk about sort of the aviation industry as being really bad for the environment. But as a comparison, um, that is responsible for 1.9%. Um, so it is a lot smaller than the internet. And it's just something that I don't think anyone's thinking about, the fact that Moodle actually has a carbon footprint. So if it will let me change my slides. So how do we reduce our carbon footprints or paw prints as Brody is demonstrating here? Um, as a rule of thumb, the more data transferred, the more electricity is used in the data centers, communication networks and end user devices. So we want to try and limit the amount of data we're transferring. Websites that are slow to load are generally sending more data, which uses more electricity, which creates more carbon emissions. So there's a really great website um, called websitecarbon.com, um, which can give you an estimate on the carbon emissions of any public facing website. Um, so I know that's not going to be hugely useful for a lot of our Moodles because they tend to be kind of locked down behind authentication. Um, so you might not be able to run those. Ecograder.com is another one that's quite good um, for public emissions. Um, but what you can do is you can just kind of see um, with the inspector panel, if you right click on, on a website and open the inspector panel, um, you can see the amount of data that's being transferred by a website and you can set goals to try and make that smaller. So my Moodle installation is called Zoodle, um, the Zoo Digital Learning Environment, which uh, took me an embarrassingly long time to think of. I think I had it for about three years before we thought of Zoodle, uh, but it's trademarked now, we own it. <laughs> Um, and Zoodle is public facing. We have a couple of courses which are um, behind authentication that you, you kind of you need to pay for to access. But most of the website is public facing. So I ran it through uh, websitecarbon.com um, when I started looking into this back in February. And I'm going to be honest with you, it was quite bad, um, which was quite sad for uh, an environmental charity. Uh, Zoodle ranked dirtier than 94% of websites tested. Um, so, but they, they couldn't actually detect whether our hosting was green, which would have dropped it by about 15% if it was. So they'd gone and assumed that it wasn't. Um, with an average uh, sort of page view of about 100,000 a month, um, that's slightly higher, we're getting about 80,000 a month, but you kind of set it in 10 or so increments. So with an average of 100,000 page views a month, uh, they think that my Zoodle website would produce um, 6,350 kilos of carbon dioxide a year, which is the amount that 289 trees can absorb. So that is uh, bad news <laughs> for something that I thought was doing quite well. So uh, how can we reduce this? <laughs> my first point is um, to ask big questions. So Moodle as a system um, uses databases. It, it transfers a huge amount of data every time you load a page. Um, it's written in PHP, which um, is an interpreted language. So it's not the most efficient language um, that can be used on the internet. But there's not much that we can do about the efficiency of Moodle itself. We can't change what language it's written in or the data that it sends. So we need to work out what we can control, what we can do to help the environment here. And the big questions are where we're storing our site or what servers we're using. Um, so it can be best to choose servers that are not too geographically far from your users. And um, that can be quite a powerful thing for sort of universities and colleges to do because a lot of your users are in sort of one geographic location. And um, for my Zoodle, it's being used all over the world. So that's a little bit harder to choose a server that's geographically close. Um, but choosing one that's close means that there's less energy and less physical resources, um, such as cabling, used to transmit the data through the networks from where it's stored to where the user is viewing it. Um, if you have a sort of more global user base like we do, um, CDNs or content delivery networks can help um, because they will store your assets closer to your end user. 
choosing hosting centres that use clean electricity um, is a really good thing to do. So more and more hosting providers are now saying, are now advertising that they have green hosting. Um, and you can look into where physically in the world the data centres are um, and you can find out which countries um, produce use that um, produce their electricity from green sources and so you can choose servers that are in countries that have green electricity. Um, Google and Microsoft are both massive players in the pushing for green futures and um, they are really good in terms of um, in terms of green hosting. AWS is not so much they talk a lot and they don't do a lot. Um, <laughs> So we can ask big questions, um, ask where do you host? Where do the, your hosting providers get their electricity from? Um, can we share hosting? Can we put um, our website on, on a server that lots of other people are using as well? Then of course, we're only using that one device. And what can we do to make that, those big questions where the site lives? What can we do to make those greener? Of course, if you're anything like me, uh, you don't have, that much control over your hosting. Um, most, I think, learning technologists are just given the Moodle and told to make it work. Um, <laughs> and so we're also going to look at some of the smaller steps that we can take um, to try and make it greener when we don't have control over the big things. So lots and lots of small steps that we can do. And of course, they all add up. I think that's the message that we do in all conservation education is that your small steps and everyone else doing small steps, everything adds up to a big change. And I think the, the smallest step we can do is to support the most basic devices. So I mentioned at the start that um, mobiles can be quite bad for the environment because of their short life cycle and the amount of resources taken to make them. So if we're supporting, you know, see if your website loads on a Nokia 3310. Like, it's not only good for the environment, um, but it's good for your users as well, because it means that they don't need to go out and buy the most expensive smartphone on the market just so that they can use your Moodle. Um, it, and I think um, that all of these small steps that I'm going to take us through now, um, it's important to highlight that they all have other advantages. So we are making our Moodle more environmentally friendly, but we're also making it better in other ways, better for us or better for our users. Um, and so I'll try and highlight both of those advantages as I go through. Um, so I've mentioned about the amount of data um, that the site transfers um, basically is directly correlated to the amount of electricity that we use. So if we reduce the data that we're, that we're storing, um, it means that we will speed up our website, meaning that there's a le less electricity used to serve up, but also it improves performance for our users. So if we're loading less data, um, it means that the website loads quicker for our students. So we can do things like switching off dormant accounts. I'm sure we've all got different tools that we've signed up for and plugged into our Moodle um, to have a go at, um, tried a little bit and never ever used again. Um, so if we remove those, it reduces the data load. It's also great for a data point, uh, protection point of view as well. So it's got those advantages. Um, if we delete old content, we're removing unused images. Uh, try and think about whether you really need to keep all of those backups, because even if you know they're not being loaded every time someone hits the page, they're still taking um, storage space to, to keep. Um, and if you're removing those things, um, you know, try and think about whether you actually need to collect all that analytics data that's sitting on a server somewhere. Are you actually using it? Um, and if you're not, if you're not using those backups, try clearing them off because a clearer server will mean less power is needed to store those things. And it makes it cheaper for you. Um, you're using less hostage, so you're paying for less. If you run things in bulk, this is something that we can do in several areas on Moodle. If you run things on bulk, I think probably a lot of people do anyway. It means you're only contacting the server once with the data. Um, and then if you're running it at night, there's less demand on the rest of your server, particularly if you've, if you've got shared hosting. Um, so it makes things a lot greener and it makes it cheaper and quicker for you as well. Um, and in some parts of the world, off-peak electricity is actually cheaper as well. So if you're running it at night, it's cheaper for you. Plus, I just wanted to include a sleepy bin to wrong in the slides. <laughs> um, loading less pages is a really good way of making your Moodle more environmentally friendly. And I think it's quite an easy win. Um, so rather than, say, 
putting content in lots of different pages, adding books, try putting them on that main page. Um, the lovely demo of Moodle 4 showed the, um, the concertina thing. Um, so that would be great because it means that you can load all of the data in one, but the people don't have to look at it all at once. Um, and although you're loading a lot of data, you're only doing it once. So you're only hitting that server once. Um, so there's less electricity involved there. Um, that can also be easier for accessibility to have all the content on one page. Um, it's easier for screen readers to scan through and you can jump to parts rather than having to find the link and then going to the next page and not knowing what's going to be on there and things like that. Improving navigation on your Moodle can help as well. Um, so if people can find a page that they need without searching, without going back to the home page for the main menu, it reduces unnecessary page loads. Um, if you have a public pay, uh, facing site, then in a similar vein, improving your SEO will make it easier for people to find your site, which means there's less um, traffic to the Google servers, for instance. Um, so the amount of data that's transferred can, can be boiled down to three things. The size of each page, the number of people visiting the site and the number of pages that each person loads while they're visiting your site. Um, and so if we can reduce any of those three things, we're reducing the electricity used and we're making our Moodle greener. We can try reducing the email sent. So uh, Michael Berners-Lee, who is the brother of Tim from internet fame, um, has a great book, How Bad Are Bananas? And he works about out the carbon footprint of just about everything. Some of it's a bit out of date, but it's a really interesting read. Um, and it's estimated that sending 65 emails is roughly equivalent in em carbon emissions to driving a kilometre in a petrol car. Um, so if we can reduce the amount of emails that are sent by the system, a lot of them are just automated. People get internet blind, uh, email blind, and they just start ignoring them. If we can stop sending those, um, try changing your subscription settings on forums, for example, um, it will make um, your site greener. I saw a little bit of um, chat going on about the use of colours um, and that can be a big way of helping make your site greener as well. So uh, when I said at the start about somebody saying their website was black and it was better for the environment, I found out why. Um, <laughs> LCD screens um, are backlit and they use the same amount of energy regardless of colour. But most, a lot of modern smartphones um, coming out now are using OLEDs, which are organic light emitting diodes. Um, and they work on a basis of lighting each pixel individually. So darker colours use less electricity. Um, and this also has the advantage of saving battery life for your users. So your students are on Moodle and they're not finding that they've used 20% of their battery just to see what their homework is today. Colour also makes a difference. I thought it was really interesting that blue pixels consume 25% more energy than green or red. Um, white is the most intensive because it's lighting all the colours at once. Um, so my blue and my uh, navy blue and white zoodle um, is going to need some looking at. Um, using monochrome themes, um, black and white images can help with smaller file sizes. Um, monochrome doesn't have to mean black and white as well. You can have grayscale, you can have different shades of a single image. I was on a website, um, I can't remember what it was, but I was on a website yesterday that had a lovely purple theme and all of the photos had like a sort of purple transparency over the top, which will have improved them for um, environmental reasons, but it also kind of helps put their brand across, which is really, really nice. Uh, on the topic of themes too, um, using custom or Google fonts increases the number of server requests needed to load a page. Um, if you want to be really, really green, um, then using server uh, system fonts like Helvetica or Arial require zero server requests, zero data transfer, and they're essentially free from an environmental point of view. But they are a lot less pretty. Um, so be strategic where you use your fonts. Um, and if you can, host your fonts um, on your own servers rather than hitting up Google fonts or subscription servers, services like Adobe, because that minimizes the amount of different server requests. You're only going to one place rather than all over the world. Um, this is an ironic slide. Uh, 
reduce auto play um <laughs> yeah here we go um so uh, there are lots of different ideas that you can do for hosting video to make it greener um which i think a lot of us probably do on moodle um so if you remove auto play from the site it means that unnecessary data that people just aren't interested in um isn't sent it also makes it more accessible because it reduces sensory overload um i found that hosting your videos on more professional websites um, can actually be more efficient, which is kind of the opposite of what I was just saying about putting your fonts on your own servers. Um, if you're putting your videos on things like YouTube or Vimeo or other services, um, although you have got that extra server request involved, um, these websites are set up to handle video. That is what they can do, and they can do it a lot more professionally than most of us can. Um, so they will adapt the resolution for different devices. They've got kind of buffering systems in place so they can make it a lot, a lot greener to host video. But if you're using video, keep it short and snappy. A single frame of video is larger than a single JPEG. So every second counts when you're making a video to so make it as short as possible. And in that vein, uh, compressing everything. Um, so I think probably a lot of us um, try to compress our images. You can make them smaller. Um, make sure that um, your images, you know, I've seen people who have who've got an image that appears sort of 300 pixels on their site and it's 3000 pixels on the server. So you can make it smaller. Um, again, that will make your hosting cheaper. Um, it will make it load quicker, but it also makes it more environmentally friendly. Um, uh, PNGs or GIFs are more efficient for simple images um, and if, if you can then just use you know a few blocks of colour for icons and things rather than really complex logos. Uh, Tiny PNG is an amazing free tool for those of you that don't that don't know about compressing images. Um, you can upload your images to the website, it's completely free um, and then it compresses them without degradation and you get a little happy cheering panda at the end. So what's not, what's not to love? MP4 is generally the smallest video type. Um, it's a lot smaller than animated GIFs. They are enormous and they are terrible for the environment. But MP4 is also great for your users because um, it has better accessibility options. So you've got, um, you can have audio description chat, uh, tracks and captions. Um, and again, these will all decrease your hosting size and will make it cheaper for you as well as helping the environment. I think the most important thing that we can do um, around this is to be honest and transparent about our journeys. Um, Recognise that um, sustainability and decarbonisation are not the same thing. So there will be times when it's more sustainable, uh, better for economic or social reasons, as I mentioned at the start, to take the option that is less environmentally friendly. And that is totally OK. We just need to be honest and say these are the reasons why we've made this decision. This is the reason why I shared the fact that my uh, website about conservation education is 94th worst in the entire world. Um, we just need to talk about it. Uh, to really make a difference, we're going to need to collaborate on a mass scale. So openness allows us to share our learnings and make information more accessible. Um, and we need to be honest about where we need to work. Um, I don't know if you've heard the term greenwashing, um, but it's like a lot of offsetting schemes. Um, they're, they're reassuring, they're good for PR. They're not necessarily actually helping the environment all that much. Um, so we need to be honest, transparent about our ecological and our social policies. Um, and, you know, we'll work out what we can do at the moment, what we don't even know, um, and talk about it with each other. Um, so this is the screenshot for Kenji here, I think. <laughs> um, and the good news is um, that using Moodle is already winning. <laughs> Um, so, as I mentioned earlier, Moodle is developed uh, using the scripting language PHP, which doesn't rate that highly on carbon efficiency tests. Um, but it does mean that Moodle does most of its processing on the server side, so it's doing it once in one machine, which is specifically powered and specifically resourced to be able to do that, to be good. 
rather than doing it on um, sort of JavaScript or other things that make that mean that all the processing is done on everybody's individual devices. It's done on um, expensive, small things that aren't built to cope with it. And it's done, you know, millions and millions of times. So Moodle has that advantage. Um, I'm not sure if I'm supposed to be naming and shaming in a in a smug meet, um, <laughs> but PHP is three times more efficient than Ruby, um, and there are a certain canvas maybe written in Ruby. <laughs> Although if we're naming and shaming Blackboard, um, is written in Java, which is actually really really good, um, surprisingly low for an interpreted language. So we won't mention that. <laughs> Uh, the fact that Moodle is open source is another win. Um, we have more control over our hosting. Um, we can decide where we put our websites. We can do our themes. We can put our resources anywhere, possibly more than any other LMS that I'm aware of. Um, we have more control over those fine elements, so we can make them greener if that's something that we care about. And there's a debate to be had about whether Moodle is greener than in-class learning. I know a lot of um, during lockdown and things, people were saying, oh, working from home is great because it's greener than going in the office. Um, teaching online is greener than teaching in person. It's debatable because we do need to factor in the fact that we're powering everyone's individual devices. We're powering and heating everyone's individual homes, as opposed to just lights on in a lecture theatre where everyone's sat in front of the single screen. Um, but online learning can be better because there's no printing materials needed. There's no printing of assignments. Um, so it's, I would say it's, and it is more sustainable in the fuller sense of the word um, because it allows greater access for different times and locations and languages than an in-person lecture would. Um, so these changes, they, might seem huge everything that i've said you know there's a lot of them some of them might not be possible for you um but some of them are small and they will have other benefits as well um so i think you know a lot of this is worth doing um creating a moodle that is better for the planet um hopefully means that we also create a moodle that's better for for our users as well um, and I'll just finish with the words of um, anthropologist Margaret Mead, who is quoted in our brand new RZSS strategy. Um, so never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens can change the world. Indeed, it's the only thing that ever has. And I will just skip to my links. Thank you very much. <laughs>